I'll be showing 10 new features in OneNote. This includes the much requested vertical tabs option, inking improvements, math updates, and a whole lot more. So let's get started. The first new feature is the long awaited vertical tab layout in OneNote desktop. I'm here in my OneNote Windows app on the desktop and typically the right hand side is where the pages are and tabs across the top, these sections are horizontal and then you have notebooks over here on the left and you can expand that and pin it. The new update allows you to go to the view tab. Now many folks have said, I want my OneNote to look the same across all platforms, web, Mac, iPad, etc. The desktop app has always been a little different, especially in education, this has been a top request. So I'll go to the tabs layout here on the view tab and I'm gonna choose vertical tabs. And look what happens. Now the pages are on the left, the notebooks and sections are on the left as well and all aligned vertically. I've expanded a notebook here and now the sections look just like they do in the web and the one for Windows 10 app and on iPad. And this keeps everything aligned on the left hand side. If I wanna collapse the notebooks on the left, I can just click on the three line hamburger menu and everything collapses so I get more space and click again to expand that. And as a bonus, you can go into single line mode right here, drop this down and choose simplified ribbon. Now it really looks a lot like the web as well as the Windows 10 app. So now all of your OneNotes can look the same. And if you go back on tabs layout here, you can go back to horizontal tabs and we're back. The second new feature are improvements to inking and drawing shapes easily. I'm gonna click on the draw menu and I'm gonna click on a pen. And this works with a mouse, a stylus, or just your finger. So first I'm gonna draw a square with my mouse. It's kind of ugly, I can't draw it very good. And if you hold right on the corner, it converts it into a nice square. Same thing with a triangle. I'm gonna draw a triangle with my mouse and hold the top. It makes it into a triangle. It works with a circle as well. Whoo, it's a really ugly circle. And hey, that's looking good. That lets you make really nice shapes easily. It also works with lines. If I'm kind of drawing a line and I hold here, it makes it into a straight line. The third new feature is a shortcut key for drawing straight lines. If you hold down the shift key and just draw like this, it makes a straight line. So I can hold down shift and draw horizontal and straight lines. And if I wanna move it, I hold my mouse and now I can click and then just drag that all around so I can drag just like that. It's really handy to make lines quickly and straight. The fourth new feature is another ink improvement and it's similar to the last one. First, I'm gonna draw a square and then I'm gonna hold my mouse right here when it makes a nice square. Now, if I wanna rotate that with my mouse button down, I can start dragging that square and rotating it. And again, this works with your finger as well as a stylus. So really easy, this is kind of fun, a little mesmerizing, to click and drag and rotate a shape. So if I do it with a triangle, same thing, draw the triangle, hold it and then just start dragging it. You can even size it. So I'm sizing it bigger or smaller really easily. So spin it around, make it bigger or smaller. The fifth new feature is that we've added back the 0.35 millimeter pen size. So I'm gonna click on a pen here. If you click the arrow again to drop it down, you'll see the different thickness sizes. So right here, you've got a really big thick size. This is the 0.35 millimeter right here. I'm gonna click that and this is one that we had removed but now it's back. And this is a nice in-between size to get just the right pen you need. The sixth new feature is a math feature and we've added the practice quiz right back here into the desktop app. So I have a math equation right here that I've added. I'm gonna select this. If you go to the insert menu, you're gonna see way over on the right, there's a math assistant. And actually it's also on the draw tab. So if you go to draw, we also have the math assistant there. You can find it in either place. I'll click on math assistant. Now this automatically recognizes my equation and I'm gonna solve for Y. This is the math solver that we've already had, but I'll click here to show this. Now there's this practice with similar equations. Now imagine you're a student, you're working on math and you have this equation. I'd like to practice with similar equations to solve. So I'll click here and for math practice, it generates a problem. So it says solve for y. And here's the equation. And I'm just gonna take a guess here. We'll click right here and I can say check. Oh, looks like I got that one wrong. This is the right answer. And the solution steps are right here. So if I click solution steps, it's gonna show me all the different solution steps so I can understand how that problem was solved. Now I can hit back and I can go and try another problem. So I'll hit next. Here's a similar but different problem. I'm gonna guess again, I'll just click right here. We'll say check. Hey, I got that one right. I can even check the solution steps as well on this. 
The seventh new feature is that we've added the immersive reader to help people who might need extra assistance reading the math steps. Might be visual crowding, could be dyslexia, maybe they don't speak the native language. So if I wanna take these solution steps here and pull them into the immersive reader, I just click on this immersive reader button. The immersive reader reduces distractions and it lets you do many other things. For example, I can click on a word here and have a picture. So for picture dictionary, subtract, and I can read that out loud. I can click on a specific equation like right here and hit play and it'll read it. 6y equals 7 minus 7x seven squared. Step 2. Divide both sides by... I can hear that read out loud. I can change the background color so I have a bunch of different options here. I can go here and I can maybe choose line focus and that will help my eyes focus and I can navigate. This is like a reading ruler overlay and gives me a little extra focus and attention. I'll turn that off. I can also translate into 116 different languages. So in this case, maybe I wanna translate the steps into Spanish and I'll choose translate the entire document. And now I can read that out loud in Spanish. Pasos para resolver ecuaciones lineales. So all of this is built right into the immersive reader in the math assistant over here on the right hand pane. And as usual, if I wanna insert these right onto the page, I can click over on OneNote and go here. And now I have these steps right on the page. The eighth new feature is that we now support Dictate in OneNote for Mac. I don't have a Mac to demo this, but if you go to the Dictate button on the Home tab in Mac OneNote, there is now built-in dictation which you can launch, and we support many different languages, over 50 languages actually, and you can even tune it around filtering sensitive phrases or auto punctuation. So Dictation is now rolled out in OneNote for the Mac. The ninth new feature is improved printing to PDF. We are recently rolling out to insiders the ability to have PDF printing natively part of OneNote. So you no longer have to have that PDF Adobe add-in. In addition, when you print a PDF, you no longer will have as big of storage requirements and syncing requirements in OneNote. So we've made it slimmer and easier and faster. So I'll briefly show how that works. I'll go to the insert menu and I'm gonna choose file printout. I'll choose my learning tools research study. It's printing. Now the entire PDF study is printed as a PDF, but behind the scenes, it's slimmer and there's less megabytes being stored in OneNote, which makes your OneNote smaller and syncing faster. The 10th new feature is that OneNote for the web now supports inserting attachments that are greater than 19 megabytes. There used to be a hard-coded rule that you could not do that. That's recently been changed. So now I can go to the insert menu and choose file and insert a file attachment, and I can put files greater than 19 megabytes onto the page now. If you want to keep up with all the latest Microsoft updates and tips and tricks, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get all the latest videos that I post.